Hello there, so it's uh, mid-April 2024, just on Inglewood Park here, and I'm going to walk up into Pelham Woods, which is this bit just here. Go this way, I think. It's an absolutely glorious day today. It's just a uh, breeze has dropped off, still a bit of a fresh breeze, but uh, it's dropped right off. Uh, the sun is bright and warm. Bumblebees out, that's all you can see. Nice little bumblebee there. These bluebells, I'm pretty sure these are Spanish. They may be English bluebells. There's a bee. Going for the lesser celandines, these little yellow flowers. Probably looking for a nest site actually. So Pelham Woods is a little nature reserve. Sycamore and ash woodland. Used to come in here an awful lot, but I've not been in here for probably over two years. So I thought I'd have a have a walk. And I'm gonna go up along this path that goes under the old railway bridge. The trap bed from the old railway goes through Pelham. What a beautiful day. Is that a black cap up there? Definitely one of our my, most common warblers now in the undercliff black cap. In the elder just in front of us. Blue tick calling. I think it might have flown out whatever it was in there because I can't see it now. Okay, so there's a great tit up there, so I think that's what it was. Here's more of the honesty. I haven't seen any orange tip butterflies yet, but uh, there's wild garlic, I think. Maybe. Jack Dorges called. Not sure what this shrub is. A loud black cap. Be of some sort appreciating the um, thingy me jig. Why do I always forget the name of that stuff? The yellow flower. Somebody will tell me in the comments section. <laughs> Herb Robert, I think. There's lots of little bees flying around, little tiny mining bee type things, and other various flies and various insects of different types. That's one um, benefit of all these landslips that we've had is a lot of these bees we get, so the, the kind of the undercliff, the south coast of the Isle of Wight is well known for being really good for rare bees or specialist bees, ones that have very exacting requirements. And I don't, I don't mean bumblebees, I mean little solitary bees and mining bees um, and wasps, little tiny things. Um, but yeah, so the landslips create just the kind of bare disturbed ground that they need to build their nesting chambers in a lot of these species so they need all that fresh disturbance and those freshly exposed cliffs in sandy friable soil for some species and there's a magpie there other species like the chalk and other species like the clay and the seepages a couple of magpies so yeah from from a wildlife point of view, all these landslips are actually... Oh, there's a... Oh, God. Why can I not remember the name of that butterfly? Bright yellow thing. Is it a comma? Hmm. 
It's cloudy yellow, is it? Tell me in the description <laughs> or in the comments section. Yeah, clouded yellow, I think, but I uh, don't think it was a comma anyway. This old um, yellow archangel, I think, doing a lot of eye thinking this morning. It's midday actually, so. Uh, yeah. Nice hoverfly there. And a ladybird. This is the old uh, railway bridge. Obviously the span has gone from the top. So I haven't actually got very long to record this video, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit and bob up and down a little bit. Thank you uh, so much supporters who have, um, so I got a, a thanks which is, uh, oh, there's a J ahead of us. So yeah, thanks to um, Mike for incredibly generous support via Buy Me A Coffee and yeah, just everyone who's supported me via that route. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it means a lot. And um, wow. That's the inner cliff face. Green sand exposure there. So back in the day, this would have been a lot more open. Probably heard that raven croaking just a second ago. There he goes, up there somewhere. So back in the day, this would all have been a lot more open. Bright and sunny. But gradually over the years this woodland's developed. Sycamore dominated woodland. Sycamore woods aren't aren't that good for wildlife to be honest. They're good for aphids, which in turn make them very popular with um, things like chiff chaffs and willow warblers and blue tits and great tits eating the aphids. So they support a high abundance of a few common species, but not very many species, if you see what I mean. So an abundance of aphids, green flies and black flies, well, green flies primarily, um, but not many other species of insects, invertebrates. Whereas something like an English oak, you know, sessile oak or the other one, peduncular oak, they support both a very high abundance of invertebrates and loads and loads of different species as well. So if this was an oak wood, what was that calling That was a red kite. So that's the radio I'm calling, but there's a red kite just up there. Rather nice. Not sure what the other thing that's calling. What is that? Can't even tell which direction it's coming. My ears are so bad. Okay, I'll have to work out what that is later. It's going to be something really obvious. Don't even know if you can hear it on the recording.
Anyway, just at the bottom of Paradise Walk. Loads and loads of lesser celandine. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, back to the landslips. Very good from a wildlife point of view, believe it or not. It just creates a dynamic, disturbed sort of environment that loads and loads of species of wildlife really needs and are adapted to. So stabilising everything wouldn't be good from a wildlife point of view. Obviously it would be good from a house owner's point of view. So there's an odd little patch of ground in here. So uh, back in the day, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, this was a shrubby, scrubby open patch. And then somebody, not sure who or why, started to plough it up. And they've persisted in ploughing it up. But um, as far as I can tell, they never grow anything in there. So if anyone's got any ideas why this patch is cultivated, each year, I can only assume it's registered arable land and they receive arable payments for ploughing it up, keeping it as arable. I don't know. Somebody tell me why they do that. I mean, from a wildlife point of view, the shrubby habitat with grassland was really good. But so too is this cultivated ground, um, in theory. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just intriguing as to why it's done. So yeah, this little path takes us um, up from within the uh, undercliff. Something calling there, a bird. I can barely hear this thing that's calling. Where is it? I need to see it really. I know what it sounds like. I'm going to stop recording and try and see this thing that's calling. I don't think it's just a chiff chaff. Okay, so that was a chiff chaff. It started singing. <laughs> it's singing now. There's a chiff chaff. So just uh, going to try and get up the top because I'm being distracted too much by dodgy sounding chiff chaffs. And uh, my battery power is quite low on this 
iPhone Mini 13, which is what I use to shoot the videos on. And I want to get up to the top and video the panoramic view across this bit of the undercliff, which is rather lovely. So we're almost up out of the undercliff now, almost up on Whitwell Road. So uh, soon I'll do a walk up, up the top from here, up onto the downs. Uh, haven't got time today, unfortunately. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you uh, enjoy the videos and check out my other channel Steve Jones Wild Writer a link to which will be in the description right in a minute we're going to come up to the view and I'm going to put the microphone on because I can feel the breeze and it's a northwesterly so it's going to be quite exposed up here so let's just put the microphone on now I think right so hopefully the wind isn't ruining the sound quality so we are now up to the level of Whitwell Road. What I'm going to do is, uh, can't remember the name of the farm now. Roxall Manor? No, not Roxall Manor. Hmm. Well, Dean Farm is over in the distance and the nearer farm I've forgotten the name of. <laughs> Let's go down this way. Look at the view. There's a rugby club just the other side of the road. It's my uh, first speckled wood of the spring just there. I don't know if you can see it. Even I can't see it now. It is there. See it with the naked eye? Oh, there it is. Right in the middle of the shot. Close its wings up. So you can see the underside. Just about. That's better. Okay, I'm hoping you. <laughs> Immediately shuts its wing. So it's really nice seeing that red kite earlier. Um, they're on the cusp of colonising the Isle of Wight, I think. If you come from the mainland, you're probably very familiar with red kites. It's only in the last few years that they've become anywhere near regular on the south of the Isle of Wight. And as far as I know, they're not really nesting on the Isle of Wight yet. They will be in a few years, and I think we're right on the edge of them properly appearing. Fingers crossed, because I do love them. They're very beautiful. They do become very abundant, which not everyone appreciates, but I... I do. So just going to check out the view up here. There's a small blue butterfly colony along here. Colony. Not this time of year. So I'm looking east, well southeast. You can see the cricket club, vent the cricket club there. Kind of a Wheeler's Bay, just over the brow. Vent the botanical gardens, botanic gardens, just there. Woody head, just between the trees there. Looking west now, 
That's Whitwell Road and the rugby club is just over there. And Fox Hills, I think it's called, which I think used to have a golf clubhouse on it. So I remember it before these houses were built, just an open area of chalky, undeveloped land. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, like I say, do subscribe to the channel if you do.